Hey, welcome back to my channel. Today, I want to talk about print on demand or POD. You might have watched one of those videos talking about how easy to make money, $300 a day, like uh, 10,000 a month. The number just goes up, 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 uh, over the roof. Ever since I uploaded my first video about print on demand, I've been recommended those videos and I watched almost every single one of them and have learned a lot of things about POD. So I'm not saying they were useless or they were scammers or anything, you know, they could actually bring you business. But I think they didn't really answer the most burning questions artists have, such as, is POD sustainable? Is that a legit business that is actually making the world a better place? Because that's why we go into art, right? We don't go into art to make stupid money, right? We would be doing any other businesses and making more money than making art. And also some other things related to selling your originals, such as what if an uh, art gallery doesn't want you to sell POD? Like, can you stop it? You know, what if other people steal and copy your work? Those questions are very little talked about. That's why I want to make a series of videos talking about it, and this is uh, one of them. First, in this video, I want to talk about the most basic, that is, is print on demand uh, worth it for artists to try in 2022? Here, when I say worth it, I don't just mean worth it in the sense that is worth your money or time, because it requires minimal money or time for you to actually start. So no, when I say worth it, I mean as an artist, the biggest, uh, let's say, property you will have or the biggest equity you will have is your personal brand value, like as a personality. If you associate it with bad brands or business models, you might actually actually lose credibility and it will hinder the rest of your businesses and that's why maybe POD is not worth it. Okay, if it's worth it or not, it is purely your decision. And today I'll just go over and give you my reasons, uh, the pros and cons, so you can make your personal decision. Going to the first question, is print on demand worth it? When we talk about print on demand, we must first talk about drop shipping because print on demand falls under this big drop shipping umbrella. And the biggest criticism print on demand receives is from the relationship with drop shipping. For those of you who don't know what is drop shipping, basically, an um, entrepreneur uh, opens up a website and sources a cheap product from China, like uh, this uh, rubber band is actually from China, like I got it from China, not, not drop shipping, but just example. Very cheap, uh, low quality, usually because it's cheap, like what do you ask, right? And then this person would go to social media influencers to get them to promote this product from the site and the influencers would get anything from 5% to 10% of the sales price. And the producers are getting peanuts and the influencers are not getting enough. So who makes the most money? The entrepreneur. So that's why it's a very profitable business model, but it's not very ethical because, hey, there's only one winner. The winner takes all and everybody else is polluting the world, right? Like working their butt off and the consumers is being tricked into buying a bunch of products they didn't need or they didn't know they needed. And these products usually are low in quality. And the worst part is the entrepreneur, usually, most of the case, I'm just not including some exceptions, he is not redesigning, he's not improving, he's not even seeing the products the whole time. So it's just for profit only. And that's why people think it is polluting the world and is not making anything positive out of this business. I kind of agree <laughs> in the sense, even being Chinese, I can say, you know, it promotes Chinese products or jobs, but you know, it's not worth it for what we make. We made almost nothing. POD is very different because print on demand is made usually closer to the customer possible. So it's supporting local business, it's lower in carbon emission, the customer is buying something meaningful to them, they would use, at least personally for them, right? it's, it's worth it. And your waste of resource is put to a good cause, right? Like I'm not saying waste, but I'm saying that the cotton dyed for your t-shirt for good and people enjoy it and you know, it's not dyed for nothing. So 
So overall, it's a good thing. And as an artist, you are in control, especially if you have a website and you are using different POD providers. You can choose the best of them. You can you know, have the most uh, sustainable, the best practices uh, as a partner. Then you are associated with good practices and you are not uh, treating people or animals badly and, and you get the most profit. Or actually, you decide how much profit, what's your margin, because you pay the POD uh, separately. So like their price is fixed and the customers is paying the money that they agree to pay, right? Like they think it's worth it. So overall POD is different from uh, other kind of dropshipping businesses. And I would say it is more or less sustainable, more or less, uh, I would say moral as an artist, you can go ahead. It shouldn't, if you choose carefully the POD, right? It shouldn't damage your brand. There is another thing, 2021, uh, it's a year of uh, global shipping uh, shipwreck, or I don't know how to say that, but logistic issues. Uh, I have friends in the import export, I'm Chinese, you know, what a surprise. And they told me a lot of things like, oh, the Swiss canal is obstructed, my ship is stuck. Or things like, I don't have containers anymore, I'm building <laughs> because the containers are shipped out of China, it's stuck in the US and it's not coming back. Oh my goodness, I don't have enough like containers to, to actually ship and the orders are piled up. Or things like, oh, the products got stuck in the customs because they are lack of hands to you know move it forward a lot of difficulties and I personally have experienced this if you are an artist who is shipping very tiny like handcrafted products you will actually face this problem I will just show you one thing look this is a very small key you can see it from here, like a small key. Um, this key is shipped to me from China. A friend of mine asked me if I can go over to her storage to see her collectibles, if it's like you know, damaged by water or mold. So I thought, okay, I'll go, just I don't have the keys. So she said, I'll send you the keys from China. It's uh, EMS, so Express Mail by Air Priority. You should receive it in 72 hours. But this parcel was <laughs> mailed to me over a period of a month and a half, like almost two months months. It was very long. When I received it, I was asked to sign a paper to pay five bucks. I was like, why? You want actually five euro, right? So it's a European money. And I was like, why? You know, in the past, when I received a letter, like a very small item with no value, it did not ask me anything. But this time, five euro, why? And I was told this is a new law. <laughs> the government needs money. I need to pay. The minimum is five. So I have to pay five. And there's no problem. Like, I'm not complaining for the five euro. Like, you know, it's the minimum anyway. But this is to say that it's extremely expensive to ship a small item as an artist if you're selling originals. You know, 40 bucks to ship priority with tracking number by air. Also, there's a risk of damage by water because they spray the disinfectant and you pay extra for the clearance. It's just a lot of cost, time, travel to ship a small item with a relatively low value. Maybe your customers will end up pay for a higher price for the shipping than for the item and they might end up not buying it. So in 2022, it is definitely worth it to try print on demand. But given that you are selling internationally originals and you couldn't sell it, then you know you can use POD as a compensation. That's one scenario. Another scenario is that you are selling POD as a primary business, but you are choosing very good garments, like good items that is ethically made, that is actually good for your brand image, your personal brand. Now let's quickly go over the 10 reasons why you should and five reasons why you shouldn't work with a print on demand provider. So the pros and cons, I know it sounds a little self-conflictory or contradictory because I'm telling you yes, I'm telling you no. I think it depends on you, on what's important for you, you know, what matters to you the most. There are some deal breakers for you. So maybe you take a pen, piece of paper and write down, you know, the reasons reasons why you want and the reasons why you don't want. So finally, you can count, you know, the verses in which one wins. So here I just give you all the information. I'll go with the pro. Number one, it is risk free. As a designer, as a photographer, as a painter, you already have the designs. You don't need to spend more to acquire a design. You know, when you are an entrepreneur, yes, you hire somebody, you know, there's a cost, but as an artist, 
you don't have any cost. You know, you are the cost, but you, know, you already made the work, I assume. For example, you just uh, find a old work of yours, you take a picture with your smartphone, right, and then you upload. Maybe you want to do Photoshop, maybe you don't. So it's uh, almost zero cost. Maybe it takes you a few minutes, but that's all. Number two, it's very fast to launch. Most of the POD marketplaces or the POD uh, providers, you know, maybe it's a website that you will not need your own website or maybe you have your website, but most of them will not need any sort of uh, human control, right? So you just go there, you upload and you hit publish, that's it. There's no more BS, you know, no more verification or whatsoever. Last week I did a quick test. I went to Redbubble, registered a new account, verified it, published the work, have it online, all under 15 minutes. So it's very fast. I don't see any other businesses could go this fast. Number three, fast shipping. POD will always produce closer to the customer as close as possible. Uh, in most cases, it will arrive at the doorstep of your customer in two to three days. But of course, this is an ideal scenario. Sometimes there are delays depending on the season, depending on the weather, but in general, it is a lot faster than shipping this across continent. Number four, you don't pay import taxes. But actually when I say you don't pay, I mean your customers don't pay because this is usually bared by the customers. When it's produced near the customer or in the same country, in the same free trade areas, um, you don't really need to pay importing taxes. There's no paperwork to do. You know, it's directly arriving, that's it. So it saves money for your customer, saves trouble for you, why not? Number five, uh, lower carbon emission. There are some platforms claims to have a low carbon emission. I don't really trust them, but you know, I'll do more research. I have a list of 20 plus POD providers and I will do some more in-depth research and rating. In the next video, I'll share with you guys some comparison and details. So if you haven't clicked on the subscription button, make sure you do. And you can go back to this video and check the description box below. I will link to other videos. I would say in general, even without the lower carbon emission attempt or promise, you already automatically have lower emission because it's closer to the customer. So there's less travel, so less gas when it's produced is because someone wants it, right? So it's not like drop shipping. So it's in general, it's a very sustainable business. Number six, it's more reliable compared to a very small local business because most of the PODs, like the big ones, they have decades of experience. They're very specialized in what they do and they barely have any fails. Maybe the quality is not up to your standard, but that's your personal taste. They have a consistent quality in producing the products for your customers. And uh, you just have to try a couple of them to see which one gives the quality that you want. Um, I would usually for myself, I use a local store in Madrid. It's called Monster Stamping. Actually, I might have included them in one of the videos I published before. They're very nice. They're very trustworthy, but I don't think they are very reliable if I uh, make the order very large in uh, like under pressure, in high volume situation, they will basically fall apart because it's just two person, it's a couple. If one person falls sick, another person will have to take care of his or her partner and then they will have like a lot of works not to be able to fulfill on time. So that's why I say smaller workshops might not be very reliable uh, under pressure and the large ones might do better. Number seven, flexible. Here I mean if you one day you want to work with a gallery and the gallery says, I don't want you to produce any print on demand. You can stop and you can switch, you can uh, do anything you want. There's no commitment whatsoever. Number eight, it saves a lot of your time. Um, when you sell products, you spend a lot of time on customer service. Like, is it cotton? You know, can I wash it 60 degree? Can I like dry clean it? Blah, 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 blah. So you spend a lot of time doing this rather than producing your work or doing other more important things in your life. So in this case, you can outsource uh, to a POD supplier such as Amazon Merck, right? Amazon Merck is a, a kind of a special case because they do really good customer service and gives uh, uh, Amazon Prime free shipping and all of that. So you can choose one that gives you very good customer service that saves your time. 
Number nine, there's no art world BS or bias, if I put it in a more polite term. I'm a photographer, so there are a lot of people in the art world who actually told me this is a real case. You're not a real artist. Oh, you're just a photographer, right? Blah, 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 blah. So as a designer, photographer, or artist who are self-taught, you might face a lot of resistance from the art world when you try to enter. In this case, you can try POD because the market tells all. Like if the customers buy your work, you get paid, you're successful, like you're sufficient. You don't need to have other people's approval from the gatekeepers, from the art world, so you can avoid all of that by just getting the market. Last but not the least, number 10, exposure. As a young artist, you might not have a lot of social media following, you don't have um, traffic to your site, so you cannot sell, so you're stuck somewhere. So one of the good ways is to sell, uh, for example, Etsy, one of those platforms, they do marketing for you. They charge you a lot of money. Yes, you know, once an order is made through this kind of marketing ads, um, you pay the majority of the ads, but they have expertise. They know how to direct the traffic, so it's definitely worthwhile and you don't pay anything up front anyway so why not now let's go over quickly five reasons why you don't want to work with POD you know what kind of disadvantages it might bring you number one you might direct traffic to other people's site um, this is particularly true when you sell on society 6 redbubble and you have a social media following you share the link to your store you tell your family and friends and you say hey come to my store they go to the store and they see some other beautiful designs and they thought it was yours they bought it and they realize oh it was not yours basically you help other people make money if this is something you are okay with then it's good on you but likely you're not okay with it especially as a young artist you just spend a lot of time marketing your works you want them sold instead of giving free traffic to other people while this can be avoided by having your own website and contracting pod services like printify printful you can do that when you have your own website there are a lot more to do right so you have to maintain the site you have to do seo uh, marketing you have to do all of that you're basically having your own business and then outsourcing the production part to the pod providers of course you can retain all the customers but you know for the amount of effort you spend and you should be able to. Number two, your copyright might be infringed, your work might be stolen, but this is not something you can avoid because, hey, like if you share on social media, they might steal your ideas. If you share on Redbubble, they might steal your work. On Redbubble, I did a test, uh, actually a couple months ago, I did the bananas on the wall and I found a lot of like, I don't know, 50 of copyright infringements of this exact picture from this artist. But now, um, yesterday I did a test, it was a few, but still you can see there's some infringement you cannot stop the bad people from doing bad things you cannot stop the world war from happening if you can let me know how because I want to know how to. Um, this is a reality, uh, maybe in the future, there are some uh, deep learning, machine learning stuff that can tell if you're the original copyright owner and can tell who is infringing your right and you can sue them, you can get a lot of money. Unfortunately, at this stage with current technology, we are not able to prevent copyright infringement and we are not able to even tell very efficiently and correctly which ones are the infringers, which ones are the originals. Number three, you might be perceived as a sellout. This is like a bias similar to the art world bias. There's really nothing we can do, you know, the head is on the shoulders of other people and they can think however they want. What we can do is to uh, do the correct marketing, right? You put uh, attention into the marketing, the way you say things, you, you don't want to uh, appear to be a sellout. Like every single social media post, you say, buy my art merchandise is buy, buy, buy. Of course, people will think you'll sell out, right? So you want to limit the marketing to uh, one in 10. So every 10 social media posts you do, one is marketing, other nine are content. 
Number four, your business relies on other people. Here, when I say rely on other people, I mean other businesses. They are your POD uh, providers because they make the work. If they couldn't, you will not be able to get any money. Um, just uh, imagine Sachi Art and you. Like in this case, if Sachi Art sells your work and you couldn't deliver the work for whatever reason, for damage, for just like you sold it to someone else already and you forgot to take it out on Sachi and they sold it and you couldn't sell it to the customer and then there is no sale, right? They couldn't make that 40%. Now switch yourself with Sachi's position. So put yourself in Sachi's shoes. When you sell a product and the POD provider couldn't make it, you will not be making any money and you are going to damage your reputation. People think you are like maybe a scam or a joke and it's not a very nice saying you have to like doing the refund and stuff. So all the trouble for nothing. Um, you just have to pick the reliable POD provider, do a lot of research, do some tests before you do like, a, make sure you take your time and do your research, choose the right POD provider, go on Trustpilot, go on Reddit and just read plenty of things, go on YouTube, Google, and just find out which ones are good and you choose among them the one that works for you. Last but not the least, you cannot fully customize your products. One of the POD site says, we are the most professional, we have 3,500 products for you to choose. This is very good, but if I want to make something outside of that 3,500, even if they have 3 million, I still don't have my product. For example, um, this is a t-shirt I like, I bought it from Plaster8 in Beijing, you know, it's really cute. And there is a very nice tag, you know, and then there is the hem, there is the print on the back, there is a print on the front, and a print in the inside. So you can like flash somebody, you can flip and show is very, very cute. I would love to know if there is a POD provider who can make this, but so far I don't find any. So there are some limitations. If you are an artist with particular ideas, you want to make the specific thing, you might be disappointed with current POD um, business. Maybe in the future, you'll be able to include a personalized note in the package to ship with the POD products. But right now, you know, you don't really have this option. Now you have heard the 10 pros, five cons, and all this uh, information. What is your opinion on POD? I would love to hear, leave me a comment in the comment box below. And also I would love to know if you have any experience with POD sites, please share with the community so other people can benefit from your experience. In the future, I will be uploading more videos like this. So if you haven't clicked subscribe, make sure you hit that button and the bell icon. All right, so um, that's all for today. I'm running out of batteries. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.